Hi, this is Zach with HVACDirect.com, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to size a mini split heat pump system. Now, these systems are similar to your traditional split systems, but there are a few key differences that we have to consider when sizing these systems. Now, right off the bat, we always recommend having a manual J load calculation performed to make sure you know the exact BTU requirements you need to heat and cool your home. But once you've accomplished that task, the next steps can be a little bit different with mini split systems. Almost every mini split system out there, and definitely every mini split system that we sell, has a variable speed compressor or an inverter drive compressor. And this is a huge benefit. This means that even though it'll have a rated capacity, for example, you might have a five ton system, 60,000 BTUs, that is not the only capacity it could run at. These inverter drive compressors can ramp up and ramp down. That means they have a maximum and a minimum capacity. And this is very helpful. Let me explain why. The requirements in Florida compared to Montana will not be the same. In Florida, almost certainly your cooling load will be much larger than your heating load. Well, it's gonna be the opposite in Montana. Up north, your heating load is going to be the much bigger number. Now, with a traditional split system, this is much less of an issue. You have a furnace that runs on natural gas or propane, and you size that appropriately, and then you have a separate cooling system. So they can be different BTU capacities. For example, in Montana, you might have a 120,000 BTU furnace, but only need a two-ton air conditioner, which would be 24,000 BTUs. No worries. But what do you do when you're trying to use a mini split or a heat pump system where you don't have two separate sources? Now, on a traditional system, what you often do is add in electric backup heat to make up for that difference. But if you're doing a wall mounted mini split, concealed duct, floor mounted, ceiling cassette, anything like that, you often don't have the option to add in that auxiliary heat. So the question becomes, how do you actually size the system? Well, no worries. Here at HVAC Direct, our sales team is an expert at this, and they'd be happy to walk you through the process. But in general, as a rule of thumb, you're going to size the system off the larger load. So if the cooling load is larger, size off that. If the heating load is larger, size off that. This almost works for every application. Now, of course, just like anything, it's a little more complicated than that, and there are some restrictions you have to follow. But as I mentioned, don't worry about that. Contact our sales team and they'd be more than happy to walk you through the process and make sure that you're sizing your equipment properly. If you have any questions or feel like we missed anything, please leave a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button so you can always be aware when our next video drops. We hope to see you then.